Conversations. Conversations with, with S.D. SD Booker. Booker. Now, right now, what, what brought you to the point to the work you're doing right now? I know you're involved in a lot. I don't know if you can touch on everything, but what you can touch on, what you can speak on, what got you to that point? And can you speak on whatever you can speak on? Wow, that, that can be a long story, but um, I'll do my best to, you know, touch on it, but keep it short. Okay. Um, so at age 24, I had cancer. And I'm telling you, I mean, cancer is an anxiety disease. We can get into all this kind of stuff because, you know, when you're suppressed, when your energy is not allowed to go out and do what it needs to do, which our souls all, I believe our souls bring whatever energy we need with us to accomplish. And when, it, okay, for example, being in that religion, I wasn't allowed to do the things that I know are my soul's mission because everything had to be done within that little circle. And you were very, very limited as to what you could do. Well, personally, I have a, a lot of energy. I have a lot of downloads. I have visions I have that, that are pouring into me all the time. And if you don't have an outlet for it, you get sick. So um, it, it was, it was, you know, a lot of kind of tough things, but um, I learned, and, and again, I was very um, chemical sensitive. So as far as going to the medical route, I couldn't even do that. That, that wasn't even an option. Because my body was chemical sensitive. I can't take anything like that. Very sensitive. So um, I consulted with a natural practitioner, natural doctor. Um, she, you know, did some protocols, things like that. She discovered in the blood work, she said my cells were the cells of an 80-year-old at 24 years old. Wow. Okay. So, so that's, that's pretty drastic, right? right. So I, I'm starting to learn. I'm struggling. And four years later, I had a massive heart attack. At the age and uh, at, the age at that 20. point, 28, yeah. Right. Um, and it was, it was pretty severe. Again, um, you know, I was in, I was in, when it happened, I had been sick so much prior to that, that I was kind of in denial. I'm like, no, I'm doing my best. This can't be what it is. But my mother's there and she's like, no, you know, this is, and I keep passing out, you know, and, and having all this pain. And, um, but, but she knew she was scared. She didn't know what to do, but she also knew it, me as her child that I couldn't go to the hospital because red dye was something that would kill me. And that's the first thing they do if you have a heart attack. So I said, no, mom, no, mom, just let me stay here. I'll be fine. And it was, <laughs> it was, it was something else, but I, I stayed there. I stayed there at home and, uh, I was in and out of consciousness for two weeks. Um, but I did have, I did have some outside, you know, friend, natural doctors that had scanning machines that came in and scanned and test seen that the, you know, what exactly was going on with my heart. It was massive damage. So, um, but you know, I just was like, okay, everything we go through is for a reason and I'll get through this if I'm supposed to. And at the same time I was having, I mean, that experience was something that never, ever will go away from me because I was out of my body on the other side. And I seen things that you will not even believe one time we, we can actually do a whole show on that and i can tell you what i've seen and how it relates to where we are right now and on this planet but you know i don't know it, it's just i just have you know so many experiences that have led me up to here to where i was being persecuted in that group for one reason was that i wouldn't go to the medical field they would not hear they would not understand you know, even if my mother tried to tell him that, that she can't, you know, her, her vibration is not of such, it doesn't work. Mm. You know, my mom had tried different things. You know, as a child, I had a skull fracture. I was trampled by a cow. They thought I was dead at one year old. Um, wow. I had been in six car accidents. So I've been beat up. <laughs> and wow. my mom realized at age 15 that she couldn't take me to the doctor anymore because it was just me. It was, it was taking me downhill. I would get violently sick. I couldn't take anything they'd give me. Wow. So, um, you know, thankfully my mother was, you know, aware enough that she realized that that was happening. Um, but I was being persecuted so much that there was almost no chance. I mean, within, it was six months after that heart attack that my husband at the time was in a head on automobile collision and pronounced dead at the scene. Wow. But I had had, I had had a dream or a vision just the day before 
and I knew he wasn't he was he wasn't going to die, even though they said he was. So there, that was a story too that we can go into. That was quite intense, but um, basically I went up there. They took him a long ways away, and um, you know, seen him come back, mm. and feeling the energy that brought him back coming in through the crown of my head, going out my hands. I literally could feel it happen. So it, you know, there was a lot of things I had to learn, experiences I had to go through to learn. I believe it's to learn how to use the energy that I was given, how to use the energy to heal, which is what I'm here for. Because the healing is what we need, mind, body, and spirit. So that's kind of what got me where I am. I, I um, you know, they were persecuting us. And finally, one morning, I just, I'm just like, I'm not, I can't go back. And that was hard because everything, my whole life, all my friends, all my family, everybody I knew was in there. I didn't know anybody outside. Wow. So when you think about this, stepping away, you have five little children and you're cast out. When you, when you leave your band, they, they ban you. They're supposed to treat you like you're dead. Wow. wow. So I'm telling you, it was, it was pretty drastic. So, so like I said, um, they say spirituality is for those who've already been to hell. That's just a teeny glimpse. There's a lot more. Wow. So, That's, yeah, I got a theory. Uh, just I derive from my own life and other lives I've watched. And listening to you, it brings me back to that theory I have. When you were going through all that stuff as a, as a child, uh, probably not then, of course, but looking back in hindsight, uh, going through all those those beatings and your body's been beat up and, and ridiculed, ostracized. Do you think those those times were preparing you for what you had to endure in the future? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's like spiritual weightlifting is what I say. Yeah. yeah I remember at age, I remember clearly at age 11, I loved, I loved nature. I lived in nature every minute I could by myself. I'd go alone. My dad had a uh, a farm where he had a woods I'd go back there and sit and I would just talk to my higher self I would just talk and and hear and listen and uh, I clearly remember one night I was out in the moonlight I was looking at the moon and I said you know and I just felt this thing unfolding inside of me for humanity for people I didn't know but for humanity in general and I remember saying out loud you know what I'll do whatever it takes. Just show me truth. Because I already knew at that age that the things I was seeing weren't truth. Wow. And there were years later when I was going through some of the roughest times, I would look back and think, remember myself saying that and think if I really knew what I had to go through, would have I still said that? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You know? Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, um, Sometimes well, they say ignorance is bliss. And so, yeah, sometimes we don't know what's ahead. And that's a good thing because we're, we're forced to not. It is, but go yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, when I remember that feeling in my soul, that unfolding of just, just opening myself up to the universe. When I said that, I still think I would have just because it's like when you come here for something and you start to feel into what it is you're here for, you're going to do whatever it takes. You literally are going to do whatever it takes to, to accomplish that because that's the challenge that your soul has set for yourself for spiritual growth, I believe. I, I believe that. I, I talk about this in A Toast to the Men, the book, that we all have a mission. We all have a purpose. And when we're, we're not aligned with our higher self and doing what we're supposed to be doing, it, it's going to eat at us. We won't get any yeah. rest. Uh, we won't have any peace. It's going to eat at us until we accomplish what we're supposed to accomplish. So I, I definitely believe that. Uh, yeah. I also think, you know, you don't graduate. You don't go, you may die physically, but you got to come back and redo that lesson until you pass it. Uh, yeah, I believe Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. And a lot of times being on your mission, it can actually come when you're not on your mission, it actually shows up in physical ailments, I believe, is what I've seen. Yeah. It'll actually show up as, you know, all kinds of things, it, you know, kind of depending on what it is that um, 
you know, where, where it stores in your body. And, and again, you know, it becomes an energy block your blockage to yourself for you accessing your own energies, you know, is what I believe. 